Good morning, good morning, LifeGate Church, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there um, here that came to praise the Lord, amen, and the ones that are watching, happy Mother's Day. We just think that, uh, you know, mothers are beautiful, and, and of course, you know, it's, it's amazing to, to be a mother and, you know, what they have to go through and what they do for their children, right? And uh, once again, let's uh, stand up and let's pray so that we can start the service. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to be here this morning to worship you, to praise you. And I just ask that you pour your blessings over each mother that's here this morning, Lord, and each mother that's watching and all mothers all over the world, Lord. We ask that you just take care of them, Lord each and every day as they pray for their children, Lord, as they, you know, love on their children. Lord, we know that you are the name of, you have the name above all names, Jesus. And we just praise you and worship you because you deserve all the glory and you deserve all, all the glory and all the honor. And we just ask, Lord, that you just come this morning. You send your word that where there's two or three gathered, you are here. And there's more than two or three, Lord. And we just ask that you just pour your Holy Spirit over each and every one of us this morning, Lord. That you just pour your blessings over each and every one of us this morning, Lord. Let us use our voices, Lord. Let us use our hands, our feet, our hearts, our minds, everything to worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. Like, 
This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like
you go before Then can stand against the power of our God Shine in the shadow You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power of our God And almighty fortress You go before Nothing can stand against the power of our God You shine in the shadow You win every battle Nothing can stand against the power
You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may seem like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Good morning. This song is powerful. All the songs we sing this morning are powerful. But I want you to look around. Who are you surrounded by today? Here in the church, who are you surrounded by? Like-minded believers. Amen? We are like-minded here today. Some of you are going to be going out later with family. Some of you may have been out with family last night. But we have this thing that's called Ohana in Hawaiian that says we are family. So today as you are here, you're with your church family. And you that are online with us, we are your church family today. And we celebrate you. We worship with you. And these songs that we sing are just testimonies and reiterating our faith in our Lord Jesus. And so today as we are here to do that together, we will be blessed, we'll be encouraged, we'll be edified, and we will leave with hope that no matter what happens this week, we're going to go back to this song and say, I got to get on my knees and I got to fight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn around and greet somebody here in the, in the auditorium. And those of you online, welcome. We're so glad to have you in the house today and with us online. And we have a few quick announcements we're going to make. And then we're going to do some transition into some things this morning that to celebrate our moms, to celebrate the women in our lives and those that God has given us. So as we start, the first thing I'm going to do is college graduate Ceci's in the house back there. Give Ceci a hand. We attended her her baccalaureate on Friday and her graduation yesterday, and I am so proud of her as well as her family. They... um, I saw them, I've, she graduated from the school that Pastor and I and Carly went to and some others here in the church, 
And I had never seen these stoles that they gave them when they were a first-generation college graduate. It was beautiful, the stole that the school gave her, recognizing that she was a first-generation in her family to graduate, and magda cum laude. So on top of that, she pulled, you know, about a four, not quite a four point, but she was right there. And she worked here at the church and served you. So today, hug her, give her high fives, um, tell her you're so proud of her. We're going to be celebrating her later in the, in the month, but she has worked hard. And I was so proud of her yesterday. I was just like her mama. I was just like, ah, that's my girl. And um, some of the other girls that we knew that were being, gra- that graduated and reconnecting with some that had graduated. And so it was a fun day yesterday honoring them. And I know some of our guys, where are our good looking guys? Where are you? Come on, come on, stand up. Come on, stand up. Where's, where's Lewis? Lewis, Lewis. Oh, Lewis, right there. Stand up, buddy. Come on, Daniel. Stand up, Jason. Look at these guys in suits. Look at these guys. Now, I'd like to say they did that in honor of Mother's Day, but that's not what they did. They went to prom last night, but they are in church. And Jason told them if they came to church, he would dress likewise. And so he honored his commitment, and he wore a suit today. We're proud of you guys. We're glad you had a good prom last night or Friday night, whatever the case may be. Thank you. You may be seated. But these young men, they serve our church so well. Um, They're on cameras today. These young people, Jason and Christina and Kyle and Angie and Dan, are doing such a great job with them. So today, when you pulled in the parking lot, how many of you saw those two pallets and said, what is that? Okay, so we had an event here yesterday. And it was not um, our event, but we allowed a group, Journey, Hope, and Love, to use our facility to bless moms in the neighborhood. That's the stuff that was left over that they couldn't get rid of. So those are boxes of 36 hand sanitizers in each box. They're about this big. Take them today, please. Please take them. If you can use them, you know somebody that can use them, a school that can use them. And in the fellowship hall on your way out, there's some grocery items that were left over. Um, Pinto beans, black beans, tomato sauce, flour. And so free, all free. Just go back there on your way out. We don't usually let you go out through the fellowship hall, but we'll be there guiding you. And you can go pick up those things and bless somebody or use it yourself. A few cans of soup. But we don't have storage for this kind of stuff, so we would love to bless those and we thank journey hope and love for donating them and leaving them here and it was a it was an event yesterday that they wanted to just give flowers to the moms and and honor them as they came and make up and i'm not sure i wasn't here so i don't know what all they did but but it was a way that they served our community so we get we get the leftovers how many of you like leftovers ah yeah and it's a kitsy that's what they say in greek it's a kitsy um i love leftovers to a certain point But I don't mind some leftovers because they taste better the next day, the third day. So these are good leftovers. We checked the dates, the expiration dates, so they're good leftovers, okay? So please help yourself with that. This week, we have a really light schedule here at the church. Friday night youth, Saturday men at 2 o'clock. Men, 2 o'clock. Where are you going to be? Here at the church. What are you going to be here for? Fellowship and food. So we invite you to be here, be a part of that. We'll be getting some other events out to you that are coming up in the fall. In the fall, I'm already going to the fall, summer. Um, But we are we're excited about what God is doing with our men. And so those two events are happening Saturday morning prayer. If you want to jump on at eight o'clock in the morning, um, we'll be doing that as well. So as the ushers come forward this morning, we're going to receive your tithes and offerings, and um, and then we're going to transition into Mother's Day here in a minute. But we are just so honored today to, to give back to the Lord. Um, I'm just so mindful of how he protects us. So yesterday when I was driving out to Rancho Cucamonga, um, the, the GPS told me that there was a road hazard. And I said, okay. So I was watching, but nobody was slowing down. And it said it was like in the next half mile. And I'm like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, all these people just started braking. So, of course, I had to brake. But I wasn't in the lane that the hazard was in, but there was a big tote just in the middle of the freeway, in the middle lane. And I I just remember saying, thank you, Jesus, because nobody hit that tote and there was no car wrecks that I saw in my going through. And I thought, Lord, you, you always protect us. Your hand is always on us because we put you first and we honor you. And I don't know what kind of little 
things happen to you this week that you could say, oh, God, thank you. You were there for me. You met me. Jesus, your Holy Spirit led me by because I was in the word this morning. And as we give today, knowing that he meets our financial needs, he also protects us with health and, and, and avoiding accidents and things like that. I really believe he does that. And so I rejoice in that fact that, that he, if we're listening and we're sensitive and we're not distracted, he's, he's showing us something constantly. So today, Lord, as we're giving back to you, we thank you because, Lord, we're giving to you out of an abundance of what you've done for us, how you've met us, how you've promised that you would take care of us, that you would meet every need that we have. And so today, as we bring our tithes, our first fruits of our labor into the storehouse, continue to bless it, continue to cause ministry to flow, continue to have lives touched and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we open our doors, as we have classes, as we meet men's, women's, youth, kids, etc., Lord, that you're constantly moving through us as we provide opportunities for people to come here learn, and be transformed. We thank you for it in your name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you may go. And uh, we're going to sing a song together, and then we're going to transition into giving away some gifts this morning. So, Richard. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come now, Spirit, when you Feel the room, you're here, and I know you are moving. I'm here, and I know you will feel me. Calm down, spirit, when you move, you make my heart. When you feel the room, you're here, and I know you are moving. I'm here, and I know you will feel me. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah, the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Yeah, the Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates and heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates and heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart bow. when you feel the room you're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down fear when you move you make my heart bow. when you feel the room you're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will feel me oh on us you're all we want you're all we want Holy Spirit come rest on us you're all we want you're all we want Holy Spirit come rest on us you're all we want you're all we 
This tradition at LifeGate, if you're new to LifeGate, you may not know this, but we like to give something special away on Mother's Day. So this year I was thinking, you know, what could we give away? What, what would be something that would be tangible, something that you could keep, that you would remember this day, not something to collect dust or throw in a drawer. <laughs> and so it was some help with some little elves. I want to thank them for helping me and the youth group on Friday night for helping put these together. We have a gift for every woman, not just every mom, but every woman in church today. And the gift is, um, it's a little succulent plant. And we put it in a little, it came in a little container, but we have it in a little, another little container with a tray so that for you that are gardeners, you can take it home and you can transplant it into this with some good nutrients and water it. Um, I found out something about succulents. They're kind of the hot thing right now. I don't know if you watch and you see things and you observe how people are decorating. And I found out that um, I can't grow a succulent. I know you're like, what? What? Yes. I mean, Bertha has given me beautiful succulents and I've killed them. Uh, my daughter has given me succulents and I've killed them. And so I was talking to somebody one day and I said, but I don't understand because I have a succulent out in my yard that I don't even take care of. And that thing is just, and they said, well, you're, off, you're overwatering. I'm like, what? What do you mean I'm overwatering? It's dry. It needs something. And so um, I did a little research on succulents and what they mean and why they grow and why they're so important, especially during our season of drought, right? Succulents have a way to take their roots down deep. And I thought, moms that's what, and women of God, that's what we need to do. We need to have our roots so deep that we don't let the dryness of the things going around affect us. And even if we feel dried and parched and hard because the ground gets pretty hard with them, they still have a way to tap into the water resource. So today, as you will be having the kids come up at the end and hand those out to you later. But also, we kind of came up with this whole wild flower theme. Um, how many of you know, have heard that this is called Super Bloom, the season we're in? Because of all the rain California has received, we have things blooming that we have never seen before and wonder even what they are. And we heard at the baccalaureate um, the other night, one of the speakers mentioned this, and he said that even out in the desert, seeds that have been buried for decades because of so much water are blooming and they're seeing all this, this um, vibrancy and life and new life. And so we wanted to kind of um, play along with that as well. So we got these really cool, I think they're cool because I like little bags. I like to carry different things, these little tote bags. But then because we're moms and we're always in the kitchen, and women are always in the kitchen, 
We have these little hand towels that match. You could hang up. And then um, for four special moms today, we have this cute little coffee mug that's going to go with the bag that says wild and beautiful. Don't, don't you feel that way sometimes? You feel like you're, you're wild and you're beautiful. You got, it's like the other day, my husband told me, I got, we got to go to the bank. And I said, right now? Right now, we got to go to the bank right now. Go, I, I'm not even, my hair's not combed. I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't go to the bank. I went to the bank and I was wild and I was beautiful. I went anyway. But in this little gift, there's a, a little kind of mini wallet. And see this little, there's a little card in there. Now, this is my new favorite place. in Well, it's been in Paramount for a while, but this is our new favorite place to go to. Forget Starbucks, forget Coffee Bean, forget, um, what's that other one? I can't think of it right now. Dunkin' Donuts. This is her chateria. So um, if you don't like her chateria, that's okay. They have great coffee. You don't have to get her chata, but I like their green tea, her chata. I like their sandwiches. I like the atmosphere. I like to meet people there. So we thought, we'll support our local business. So whoever wins these today gets a coffee mug that you can even take in there with you and have them put your coffee in there. They'll do that. And a $5 gift card and a nice little bag and a hand towel to remind you that you are special. So I have four categories. And hopefully this is going to work today because my challenge was the mom with the most family members present. And so, yeah, so we got to figure out who's the mom. Who's the mom? Not the grandma, not the mom. Yes, the grandma, the mom. So we're going to start with grandmas that have the most family members with them today. And I think I already know who the winner is because I, I'm looking around and I know I, technically one, two, three, four, seven. How many do you have? Six? There's six. So we don't count, but we count. There's seven of us, but we, but Rosa, come on up. Rosa and Patty and the boys are here. Come on up, Rosa. Come on up. I, I, I mean, I didn't have, this wasn't hard today. I mean, she, this lady is amazing. If you haven't got to meet Rosa, come here, sweetie. She has blessed all of you today in a way that you will never know, but God will know, right? She prays for us. I love this little lady. And I come to find out that she loves children. Yes. And so we're going to get her involved in the nursery, helping with us, some, because she loves children. But she loves her family. And today, your greatest joy is what? For my grandson. Your grandson, Daniel. Going to college, UC Berkeley in the fall. We're so proud of you, Daniel. But this grandma's heart is proud. So we're going to give her, you're going to get a little, well, let me give you one that's put together. A bag with a tea towel, and you'll have to come to Paramount. I know you live in Southgate, but it's right. Just stay right here, though, okay? So now the other question I have is the mom who can tell me, are you ready? Are you ready? What was the first shoe company? P Patricia. Brooks? Denny's? Kinney's? No. Yes. Payless? No, I'm not talking about shoe store, shoe brand. Nope. Those are, well, those are tennis shoes. 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 Skechers? No. You're, you're thinking cheap. Think high end. Oh, so no, I, you know that brings me comfort to know that you guys aren't shopping there. Wingtips? No, those are men's. Like fancy shoes. I'm not going to give you all the cute clues. We're taking too much time here. Not Macy's, a shoe, a style, a name. Steve Madden? No. They're younger. They're younger. Think, um, think, think of a name, think of a name. We're taking lady shoes, high heels. Okay, I'm going to give you high heels now. Huh? <laughs> I don't know what those are. What are the red bottom shoes? They're what? Oh, they're like Louis Vuitton. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. C. 
Not only are they famous, she's famous for, she's a, they're a designer. Chanel. Who said Chanel? All right, Lisa, you get the next prize. Chanel came up with the first, even though she's not credited for it, I looked it up, she has been patented with the first um, high heel shoe. And so there's others that came out, but she was like the number one, and she's still because of her perfume and her other lines. So that was kind of a fun one. Okay, come on down, Lisa. Lisa's on the camera. You know, she's not... We're doing women today, right? So there's your gift stand right there next to Rosa so we can get a good picture. There's your gift. So you can send it to your mama, and she'll think you thought about her. <laughs> Angel, are you on today? No. <laughs> okay. The woman who has been married the longest, and your husband is still alive. Because, you know, without him, you wouldn't have children. So ready? I'm looking. Okay, how long have you guys been married? 18, Richard and 29, 38, anybody beat that, 38, oh, uh, Comas, uh, um, all right, Lenore, come, 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 a key, a key. <laughs> I know a little Spanish. And Lenore has three children, I believe. He's not agreeing with her. 54. Oh, okay. So I need someone to interpret for me real quick. Come right here. Do you like horchateria? Do you like horchateria? Horchata? See? Si? Yeah. So how many... Um, don't... Uh, don't Dando está niños y niñas? How many? How many? Mis hijas. Tres. Tres. And how many grandkids? Los nietos son seis. Six. Wow! So you get to go to Hachateria by yourself and enjoy that A little gift for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Isn't she cute? I love her. Speaking of Spanish, I totally forgot this announcement. You are all invited back to church tonight. And if you don't want to come to the service, be here at 7.30. They are providing tacos for everybody. So come to tonight to tacos. And I'm not sure what all. They were telling me yesterday, uh, tacos, rice and beans, no? Fruit, fruit. So if you want to come hang out about 7.30, uh, Pastor Nimius, uh, Francisco, uh, Rodrigo, Lauro, they're all cooking, and they make some really good food. So come back at 7.30, or if you can speak Spanish, there won't be any interpretation. You can be in the service and enjoy the service with them. Okay, one more category, since I have one left. The woman, the, the mom, the mom who's been attending LifeGate the longest. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, maybe. Oh, that was not, that, that was not set up, Okay. I promise. Cross my heart. Oh, my gosh. All right. Come on down, Carly. I didn't even think about that. I just had it on my list because I really, come on. No, come on down. You want to give it to somebody else? Okay. Then you pick somebody else. How's that? What mom would you like to bless today? No? Oh, the longest besides her. Okay. Carly's been here 37 years. So we'll go 37 years, Jason. Well, in June, no, in September, 37 years. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we came here when she was three months old. So Helen, you've been, been 25. Anybody been coming longer than 25? Anybody, any woman? I heard you guys back there. Okay, Helen. All right, come on down, Helen. And fun story about Helen is Helen and I met in physical therapy, and that's how she started coming to the church. Even though her parents were four-square pastors, and she'd been attending another church, she was looking for a church, and we met in physical therapy. She was in one room, and I was in the other, and the guy was talking, and he figured out we both were the same denomination, I think, in Christians. So one of us, I can't remember which one he took into the other one's room, which I thought that was really weird, but we were both in there on workman's comp cases, and we got to know each other, and she's been with us ever since 1994. 
1994. So welcome and we're blessed. So let's say, uh, I'd like to pray for all of you moms and women today, because as women stand up, please, you, um, if you're not a mother, you are a spiritual mother. I believe that wholeheartedly. Some of the strongest women influencers in my life were women of God that were not married or had children. And they really had an impact on my life. So don't think that you're insignificant on this day that we call Mother's Day. Because you can also be a fur baby mom. And it takes a lot of care and nurturing for animals. It really does. And, and it fulfills, that's a nurturing that you do. But as today, we want to pray for our moms. And thank you for serving. Thank you for spiritually leading. You may have an impact on a co-worker as a woman, a strong woman of God. So today, Lord, we thank you for all the moms we have here in our church. All the women we have in our church who faithfully serve, the women on the cameras, the women in the back, the women that, that come and pray every Saturday morning. Lord, you have used women all throughout the Bible in a very significant way, Lord. Lord, we um, sometimes our emotions get us in trouble, but our emotions also keep us in touch with what's going on. And just like a succulent, as we've learned to go deep in you and deep in your word, we find that that's where our strength comes from. It doesn't come from comparing notes with other people. It comes from our relationship with you. So today we thank you for these special women, Lord, for the single moms that are raising children alone, the grandmas that are raising children, the moms. The women, that, the aunties, the, the aunties who are taking and helping transport nieces and nephews, Lord. For the school teachers, for the teachers, for the, the women that have an impact at the grocery store, at the restaurant, that are just nurturing, Lord. We thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord, that you gave us a place to be tender, sweet, and fragrant. And so today, Lord, as we honor women, we thank you for this. And these ladies in particular, here at LifeGate and online, we thank you for them and their commitment to you, first and foremost. In your name, amen. 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 Thank you. Yeah, and I knocked over a second. So at the end of service, the children are going to come and hand these out to you, okay? All right. Well, good. It's always great to celebrate in some way and give some things away. And it looks like we got plenty to give to everybody. And, uh, and so that'll be a, a good thing, too. Um, my wife was talking to me and says, you know, we got these succulents up here. Why don't you make a sermon out of the succulents and whatever and talk about how the roots grow deep and all of that? I said, well, go ahead and preach. It's okay. You, a lot of times you get up here, you just go on. I just kind of want to say, well, go five more minutes and we'll be done. And so uh, I said, that's okay. So I tried to get her to do that, but she wouldn't do that today. So anyway, that's the way it goes. So you get to listen to me again. So um, here we go. Well, happy Mother's Day, everybody. And because uh, it's not just for, for moms, it's for everybody because we all have moms, right? So we're all celebrating Mother's Day, and that's a good thing. And it's always a good time to be in the house of the Lord and, and be with everybody. Tonight's going to be a special thing. So if you can come out tonight, that would be great. How many, think, how many of you think you might be coming out tonight? Anybody here? One, two, three, four, okay, a few of you, good, all right, well, yeah, you got to come, so there'll be plenty of food, He's, so uh, there'll be plenty of food, so if you'd like to come out, come on out, um, and uh, so here we go, it's a day for families to honor mom, you know, moms go through a lot in life, do they not? Moms go through a lot, think about all the things that your mom had to put up with in her raising you. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that should make us all ask for forgiveness today and come down to the altar and spend about 20 minutes at least anyway. Um, but I want to talk to you about a mom in the Bible. And this is a mom who was not planning on having a child. In fact, she was made to have a child. She was a slave who was told what to do and her owner had her sleep with her husband so that she would have a child. And that child, in turn, would be given to the, the owner of the slave. And so that's the way it went. And um, in those days of old, that, that the child of a slave could become the heir of the childless man. Childless is often a word used to describe God's closing of a womb in judgment. And many times that's the way People thought of it when they did not have a child, that it was a judgment from God. And uh, we don't 
since that today, but it was looked upon that way many times and as we would look through, through Scripture. And so uh, we're going to take a look at some Scripture this morning, and, um, uh, but I want to share this with you. God has given a promise, and God is always faithful to His Word. We're going to start there and end there today. God is always faithful to His promises. The place in Scripture I want to share with you is back in Genesis, and it's the story of Abraham, and you'll find Abraham moving on through uh, chapter 12 and going from there. We're going to be in 16, chapter 16, chapter 17. The story of Abraham and Sarah, Hagar and Ishmael, and later, of course, we would find Isaac as the promised son, but Hagar, as we typically pronounce her name, and Sarai or Sarai in Spanish, and, and of course her name was changed to Sarah, so we're just going to use Sarah, even though at this point in the Bible her name hasn't been changed yet. We're going to use Abraham, even though uh, his name was Abram up to a certain point, but just for clarity's sake and ease, we're going to say Sarah and Abraham, and you know who we're talking about, okay? And so, uh, so in chapter 15, God made a covenant with Abram or Abraham that he would have a son and he would have many descendants. And you'll see that in verse 5. In verse 6, it says, Abraham believed the Lord. Isn't that a good thing? Abraham believed the Lord. And that's where we all should start. And that's where we all should finish. In believing in the Lord and continually believing in the Lord and ending our life believing in the Lord. That is something that we are to do continually. But too many times in our lives, we hear from God. He speaks to us and we believe. Yet when we don't see things happen on our time, on our time, uh, time frame, on our uh, timeline, we either quit believing, think we didn't hear right, or begin to try to make things happen. Sarah was at this point. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 1, you will see that, so you can go there with me. Genesis 16, verse 1. Now Sarah, Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. So he's blamed it on the Lord. It was God's fault. Everything's God's fault, isn't it? It's always God's fault. So, um, the, so the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And I just explained to you, some in, in history, that that's the way it was and at times. And Abraham agreed with Sarah's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. She was 75 years old, no children. At that age of 75, I can begin to imagine all the thoughts she may have about how to have a child. This can happen, and the child will belong to Sarah. The, the word uh, have or obtain, if you read in other translations, literally means to build up from her, to build up from her. But the scheme to try and manipulate the promise of God, what happened? That kind of blew up in their face, didn't it? Kind of blew up in their faces, you who know the story. And so in Genesis chapter 16, go to verse 4. It says, so Abraham had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. She got upset with Sarai. And I guess she wanted that first place. She was a wife now of Abram. And so here we, here we go. So Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. Ay, ay, ay. Here we go. All right. Playing the blame game back and forth. And you'll see it happen back and forth. This is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms. But now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. It's your fault that Hagar is treating me this way. It's your fault that all this happened. The Lord will show you who's wrong, you or me. Poor God. What does he have to do, right? <laughs> always, always trying to solve issues between people and people coming up with various things. And anyway, God gets the blame. But, 
But, you know, they're trying to do this towards each other. Or at least right here, you know, uh, Sarah is blaming Abraham. Abraham replied, look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. What did, Hagar do? I mean, what did Sarah do? Treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. Wow. So she got back at her. She got back at her. Here is, here's Hagar having contempt for Sarai, and Sarai said, okay, I guess it's it. He told me I can do this, so I'm going to get my revenge, and I'm going to go, go this way, and I'm going to just lay it all out there. But it happened so harshly that she ran away. I want to ask you this question. How do you react or respond when things don't go the way that you planned? Think about it for a moment. How do you respond? When things don't go the way you plan, frustrated, angry, begin to do things that are out of character for you? Do you begin uh, taking on former addictions, become hateful in your speech, begin to blame things and others, even those close to you for your mistake? Look at this in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, going back one chapter. But, and Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. That's in, in Genesis 15, 6. And of course, we see that also in Hebrews 11. But this comes out of Genesis. But then we go to verse uh, 2 again of chapter 16. So Sarai said to Abraham, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarah's proposal. Abraham agreed. That was a big mistake in itself. He could have seen that Sarah was so frustrated she was willing to do anything. And he could have gone back to the promise in chapter 15 and said, Sarah, Sarah, look, God promised. God promised. He said this to me. I know what's going to happen. I know it's been a long time. I know you're 75 years old. I know time's getting short. But you know what? God promised. And he's never let us down yet. He's been faithful to us all the time. And that's where we are to go when we're, when we're going through different, difficult times, to go back and say, God, you promised these things to me, but I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. I'm at my wits end and let God come by his spirit and bring peace back to us and bring an understanding and bring his promise back to us where God can say, I said, and I'll never let you down. This was his first mistake. It wasn't about not listening to Sarah. Some people say, well, his mistake was listening to Sarah. No, that's not it, but rather not standing upon the word that God gave him. When we find ourselves in predicaments, what do we do? Abraham tells Sarah, whatever you want to do to her, do it. He refused to help solve the problem. He refused to get involved. He placed it all back on Sarah. Sarah placed her wrong on Abraham, began to treat Hagar badly as Hagar had contempt for Sarah. And Hagar, she ran away. She was pregnant. She didn't know what else to do but get away from this situation. All these different things were happening. They were all a mess. The situation was out of control, and so were the, the, these three people. You ever been in any, of, any or all of those kinds of situations before? With family, with friends, in situations at least to some degree? Yeah, we face some of these things at times. We may have handled them differently, or we may have handled them even worse. We whine. We cry, we turn toward other things, substances, we turn towards people that maybe aren't the right kinds of people, sometimes move into sin. We try and ease the pain or the discouragement in some way. But some of the things that we are to do is to consult the Word of God, pray, seek truth of the Holy Spirit. And so we may be doing that as well, and that's a good thing. 
But when we find ourselves in de desperation, we turn somewhere. Let's make sure we turn to God. But as all the stuff was going on with, with, with uh, Hagar, wow, we come to a, a two-word, uh, I'll come to a two-word statement of this, but God. Can you say that with me? But God. When you're going through difficult times, but God. When things don't seem to be going your way, but God. But God saw the whole thing. He knew the situations going on with Abraham and what his problems were. He saw the situation with Sarah. He saw the situation going on with Hagar. All of these different things were going on with different people, and God saw the whole thing. He had compassion on Hagar. And while she is in the desert beside a spring of water, the angel of the Lord appears to her and talks to her. Remember, she had run away. Find yourself by the spring. She tells him that she is running away from her mistress, to which God replies, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? We have a God who will have a conversation with us. He replies, aren't you glad that you can talk to God and he'll talk back to you? He'll share with you. In the midst of our right, our wrong, our hurt, our pain, our confusion, he will spend time to talk with you and share his heart with you and truth that will help you move forward. Let's walk through this conversation a little bit. Go to Genesis 16, verse 8. 16.8, we're going to stop, start there. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarah's servant, where have you come from? And where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? And that's a great statement. It's a great question. You think you can run from me? You think you could hide from your situation? It's going to follow you. You're going to take it with you. And many times we think we're going to be able to get rid of the situation by something that we choose to do. Whether it's drinking or drugs or alcohol or sex or whatever it might be, you know, we think we're going to ease the pain and ease the situation by, by stumbling into these areas and walking into other areas. And all that's going to do is bring more hurt, more harm, and it's going to take longer to get out of the situation than if we would simply trust God and wait. And during this time, as we're looking towards Pentecost Sunday, we're to be waiting. We're to be calling upon the Lord. We're to be being still before Him. We're to be taking some times, maybe of fasting and prayer and just setting ourselves apart to the Lord for Him to come and minister to us in a way that says, you know what? I'm going to infuse you in a greater way. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to do you with that power from on high by the power of the Holy Spirit that that uh, if, if, as you would have the Holy Spirit working in and through your life, things are going to be so much different. That doesn't mean we're never going to have problems, but we will face them differently. Where are you going? She replies, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah. I'm running away from her. I can't handle it anymore. She's just, you know, it's all I can stand, and I can't stand no more, as Popeye would say. Sarah, where are you going? I'm running. Man, when we run from problems, that doesn't mean the problem doesn't exist any longer. The angel of the Lord, in, in verse 9, the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. What a promise. I'm going to give you more descendants than you can count. Well, I can count up to 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 10,000. I can count, I can count, I can count. And he tells her more than you can count. And the angel also said, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael. He even told her what to name her son, Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. I've been there with you all the way through this mess. I've heard you. I know what's going on. 
So many times we don't think God knows what's happening. Sarah took things into her own hands. Abraham kind of just kind of was passive in the whole situation. Hagar took things into her hands. He goes on. Your name is Ishmael, which means God hears, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. That may not sound like good news necessarily, but I tell you what, gave him a promise that there's going to be great things that are going to happen through your son. And there's things I can say about that and Ishmael and then Ishmael and Isaac and the things that are there and, and all the stuff that goes on, but I'm not going to go into that. But although returning to her mistress was probably the last thing that Hagar wanted to do and the last thing she wanted to hear was a command from the Lord to do this, she doesn't fight it. She doesn't fight it. She knows that something spectacular has just happened to her. And she was growing up in this household. She has great faith in God. She was growing up with Abraham and in the community of believers. I want you to notice that he told Hagar to name her child Ishmael, just simply meaning God hears. No matter where you are in life, God will hear you. He understands your circumstance. Whatever you're going through today, God hears you. You can call out to him. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you, it says in the Bible. Mothers, you are amazing people. You go through so much. God has given you special ability to do so much. Raise kids and all that goes with that. Helping with homework, wiping their tears and the other in too. Caring for the home. Many times your husband preparing, uh, many times you're helping out your husband, you're preparing meals, you're clothing the kids, and many times you are working a part-time or full-time job on top of that. Look at all the things that you accomplish. Who has enabled you to do that? And men sometimes put down women, but I tell you, it's only because we can't hold a candle to them. You know why? Because God has enabled women to do so much. And we can sometimes get passive like Abraham. Step away from the problem. Oh, she's taking care of that. She takes care of that. She takes care of that. And the women do so much. Where's our partnership? Where's our involvement? Do we just run away from things? Maybe we do. But maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should get involved and be what God uh, you know, we said, you know, he gave us a help meet. He didn't give us a slave. He gave us a help meet to, for them to come along our side and help us. But so many times we see men just putting everything back on the woman and the woman takes care of everything. Just think of that, cooking the meals, doing this, doing that, doing, doing, uh, taking care of all the kids, making sure their clothes are bought, going here, going there, doing everything, making the doctor's appointments. Having to take off work when the doctors are sick. Doing all those kinds of things. I mean, you just run through it in your own family and others that you know. And we see how much women do what mothers really do take care of. I want you to, you know, look at, at how God has made you. And really, you should give yourselves a really big hand, and the others of, of us should join in with them. So can we just do that and just say, honor our mothers that way this morning with giving a big hand today? Yeah, you're so great. You that are online as well, we just honor you today. This is amazing who you are and what God has enabled you to do. But there's more. Not, a, not only does God hear, but look at verse 13. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. That's a big statement in our world today. You know, 
they, they see me or they don't see me. I'm invisible to people. Or you know what? They really do understand what's going on and they see me, who I am, and my circumstance. You are the God who sees me. She also said, have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well was named Ber Lahai, uh, Lahai Roy, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. 86 years old. If we fast forward a few chapters, we see Hagar again in Genesis 21. Isaac has been born, um, Ishmael has been born to Abraham, um, or Isaac had been born to Abraham, excuse me, and Abraham prepared a, a huge feast to celebrate Isaac being weaned. But when Sarah saw that Ishmael was either mocking or playing with Isaac, uh, which it could mean either one of those, uh, that, that word, um, Sarah became afraid that Ishmael could take Isaac's inheritance because in the beginning, that's what was happening, right? She gave her servant to be a wife to Abram, have a child with her, and that child would then be the heir. Maybe that's the way God wants it to be. But now she has Isaac as her own, and she in no way wants that to happen. She doesn't want Ishmael to take the inheritance, wants Isaac to be the one, which is the way God had planned for it to be in the beginning. And when we get in the way of what God wants to do, we can really muddy the waters. We can really mess things up. And all of a sudden, we cause uh, these, these issues going on. I mean, I could start talking here about marriage and how, you know, to walk through and be with, the, uh, be with the, the person and how all that should be, but things do mess up when we mess up. When we get out of line, then it starts causing a, a, just a tidal wave of problems if we don't handle things correctly and ask forgiveness and get things right, right in the beginning when we first know that we did wrong. Well, once again, Hagar finds herself in the desert because what happens here is that uh, say Hagar be, be, uh, Sarah became afraid that Ishmael would take Isaac's inheritance. So what does she do? She demanded that Abraham get rid of Hagar and Ishmael. So once again, here goes Hagar back into the desert with only some food and water strapped to her back. She wanders around and, and when they ran out of water, she sets Ishmael under a bush. She steps away from him because she doesn't want to watch her son die. That's all they have. They have nothing left. But once again, God steps in. Aren't you glad for that? In the nick of time, you'll get an a, a envelope in the mail. You'll get so, somebody will come along and say something to you. Somebody will offer you a job that you really need, or, or somebody will come along your side at just the right moment. That's what God does. But God hearing the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him. Comfort him. For I will make a great nation from his descendants. Then God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water, filled her water container and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy and he grew up in the wilderness. He became a skillful archer and he settled in the wilderness of Paran. His mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Egypt. She was Egyptian. So God remains faithful to Hagar through her entire life. And she deserves some credit for, for trusting God. I want to give you a few points as you continue to, would continue on your own as well to read and discover what God is teaching us through the story of this mother that we don't typically look at to learn from. But number one is this, God sees you and he hears you. I'm going to give you four, four things. God sees you and he hears you. 
Hagar is the only person in the Bible, only person in the Bible who gives God a name. And she's Egyptian. She's not a, a Jew. She's Egyptian. You know, we talk about names of God, like Elroy, the God who sees, uh, which is the one we're talking about here, along with many other Els, El Shaddai, God Almighty, All-Sufficient uh, all One, El Elyon, the Most High God, Elohim, just meaning God, El Olam, the Everlasting God. Then there's, of course, a, uh, then there's so many other names. But then we, you know, you talk about the Jehovah's that you're probably even more familiar with, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner, Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there, uh, Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd, Jehovah Sidkenu means the Lord is my righteousness, and then Jehovah Jireh, which is God my provider, the Lord my provider, which Leads us to the next point. So number two is this. God will always provide for you. God will always provide for you. That comes out of Abram's life. If you remember, uh, the, uh, Abram, Abraham went on later on his way to sacrifice Isaac. You remember the story there, and I won't go into it. But even, thought, uh, even though the, the name came later, God showed Hagar that he was a God that would provide for her. God had been doing that already. But Abraham, that name was given to Abraham as he was going to sacrifice Isaac when the question was asked, hey, got the fire, got the wood. Where's the sacrifice? And he didn't say, son, you're the sacrifice. <laughs> you're the sacrifice. What? And he said, the Lord will provide. He gets everything ready, puts Isaac on the altar, and then a ram caught in a thicket. God says, now I know that you won't withhold even your own son from me. You won't hold anything from me. And he takes the ram, and then together they sacrifice the lamb, and, to, and they worship, and they come back down and meet up with his team as they, that they had left down the, down the mountain. The first time that Hagar encounters the angel of the Lord in the desert, she's by a spring of water. But the second time, she's in the desert. To her knowledge, there is no water to be found. When she has already given up, the angel of the Lord appears in, Joshua, in Genesis 21, 19, and tells us that God opened her eyes and she saw a well full of water. She was able to keep herself and her son alive, and they continued to live a fulfilling life. It is true that sometimes God waits on our faith to work in our lives. But he's a good father. He saw that Hagar had given up and was completely destitute. So he stepped in and provided exactly what she needed, seemingly out of thin air. There is, there is nothing that you could need more in a desert than water and no no uh, sight more welcome than a well full of it, right by where you are. God made the impossible happen for Hagar out of his great love for her. How many times has this happened in our lives? We give up hope on something, but all of a sudden we get this unexpected phone call or whatever it is, friends showing up, just to remember all the ways that God shows up for us is amazing. He did it for Hagar. He does it for us. The third thing is God is faithful. To the untouchable, to the stray, to the outsider, to the outcast, to the refugee, God is faithful. Hagar had so many things going against her. A slave, a foreigner, and hated by a woman in power. Her son was, in fact, the patriarch's first son, but even by God's account was not the son chosen to carry on God's covenant. Isn't that kind of distressing? Hey, wait a minute. My son's the first. But that isn't the way God had it. How much less would she feel? She was an outsider in every way, and yet God treats her with so much favor and kindness, so much so that she gets the privilege of being the only person in the Bible who gets to name, give a name to God. Like I said before, she's not even a Jew. 
Number four is this, God is still at work for us. Aren't you glad for that? He's still at work for us. Even when we go off script, try things our own way, he doesn't give up on us. God never gave up on Hagar. He reaffirmed his promise of Ishmael's greatness. He reaffirmed his promise to Abraham regarding Isaac. God does not waver in his faithfulness, even with Abraham, Sarah, or us, waver in our faithfulness. The story of Hagar offer, offers so much hope to you and to me. Mothers, don't let go of that hope. You may have a lot of things going on, a lot of issues going on around you. I dealt with several things this last week with an individual, a young lady, a young mother, a person I've known since she was just a young child. But God loves her, and God cares for her. Even though she's found herself in some dire straits, God loves her, and God cares for her. Even though we've had a relationship for a long time, she needed to be assured that I cared for her and I loved her. My wife and I. As individuals, we know that God sees and hears our misery. And down deep, we know that God provides for our desperate needs and shows love to us even if we are outcasts in some way. But sometimes we just feel down. We are to take our eyes and get them focused on Jesus. To learn and know that God fights for us. In the midst of our oppression, in the midst of our depress, uh, distress, that God does not show favoritism to the, this kind of uh, individual that's down and out, and he doesn't show favoritism to those who may be more privileged. God doesn't show favoritism. We're his people. He loves us. He cares for us. You can call upon God at any time. God hears us. If you want to put it all in a, encapsulate all this as a, as a topic for the message today, God stands up for mothers. But God stands up for dads. And he stands up for kids. And he stands up for the, uh, the slave. He stands up for the refugee. He stands up for everybody. An old song comes to mind when I'm thinking about this because God may be doing all of that, but sometimes we won't see it. But an old song comes to me that we used to sing and it was something that we would sing, especially when we'd get time to come down to the altar. And it's simply this. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Jesus, we separate ourselves to you this morning. Right here in this, in this place are several people, and we have different needs. We're all on different wavelengths as far as what's happening in our lives and in this world and in our families. May we know without a doubt, Lord, that we can hear from you. You see us. And Lord, we can see you at work in our lives. Lord, you are faithful. May we be faithful to you. You are a God who cares. May we be people who care for one another. May we, may we be learn, willing to learn and listen as we read your word, as we pray, as we be still in the presence of your Holy Spirit. Move in us, touch us, strengthen us, empower us for your service. May we be people that will bring peace just as you came to bring peace to all, to the world. Lord, may we be people full of joy that you have given us so many things to be joyful about. And the number one thing, God, that you came into the world, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy to all people. Lord, 
You love us. You care for us. You stand up for us. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that this morning you will just reveal to yourself once again, reveal to, to each of us how, how gracious you are, your faithfulness to each of us. And may we uh, hear from you as we would open up ourselves to listen. That we would, as Hagar did, do what you ask us to do, even if it seems hard, to go back. To make amends, to set under that place again, to set under the authority of another individual who was so harsh upon us. But Lord, if that's what you want us to do, may we be willing to do whatever you ask us to do. Some may want to leave their jobs because their boss is harsh on them, but Lord, what is the purpose of that? Is it for us to stay there and be a shining light, or is it something that you want us to do to move forward and move on and do something else? But God, may we be open in our communication with you and hear from you and do what you ask us to do. Let us not move without, without your direction. Let us not move without your leadership and guidance. But let us be strong in the things of God. Hear your voice. Because you hear us, you see us, and you'll help us. To you, Lord, today we give you praise. I pray for all of our mothers here this morning that you would enhance their lives with your presence every day, your word every day, your leadership every day. They have so much to do. Empower them. You've given them great ability. Now, Lord Jesus, may they use it for your glory and your honor. And may you help them use all their talents and all their giftings in a rightful way that will bring blessing upon them and all that, they, all that they do and all the people that they touch. Give them strength. Let them know of your love. And I pray, Lord God, that they would be recipients of love from so many other people, their kids, their husbands, their parents, their grandkids, their other relatives. Jesus, we just pray that there would be an uplifting of each mother's spirits today as they're surrounded, not only today, but every day with love from those individuals that they touch. And we pray these things in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. These altars are open. If anybody needs prayer for anything this morning, you want some personal uh, prayer, we'll be glad to do that with you. But we want you to have a joyous day today. We want you to have fun with your family and, and, uh, and to uh, just enjoy that, uh, the presence of Jesus in your midst in whatever you're doing today. Okay? So let's sing this uh, song as we close today. Amen. Oh. Yeah, just... Then after we're done with this, you can come on up here and and uh, receive of uh... oh, and then we'll you pass up these things. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. One more time. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, 
that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you. I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 That 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's always at work for you, for you. Just like we talked about this morning in the story of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. He's always at work on your behalf. Even when you mess up, he's at work. And God will help you come through, come out, and move into a new, new season for your life that will honor God in the way in which he intended for it to be. Amen? And God bless you.